our uh, our guests, uh, Angela Cartwright and Tom McLaren, calling in from Hollywood, California, on the Super Bowl edition of the Jim Crane Show. Space. Let's welcome to the phone lines first the one, the only, Angela Cartwright. Hi, dear. Hi. How, how are you, you doing there, you great artist? You? How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. What an intro. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you, uh, the uh, full disclosure, I always like to say, I've been watching, I got hooked on uh, Danny's show is on, on Me TV on the East Coast here around dinner time, you know, and it's on when we're eating dinner. And the yeah. one was on the other night when Uncle Toulouse, Uncle Tanoose met you and Marjorie Lord for the first time. And when you said, oh. he pinched me, I was like, oh, my God, I tell you. <laughs> So <laughs> they're pretty entertaining, I must say. They're lots of fun to watch again. That, it's pretty so good. Lots of memories. It's <laughs> just so great. And then also, Lost in Space is on when I go home at night. It's on Antenna TV. You know, it's oh on. My. It's on at night, uh, opposite like Saturday Night Live and everything. So uh, I'm getting it both barrels. I wanted. To, I wanted to welcome you to the show too for the second time. It's so nice to have you back. And uh, how was it last week with all the with everybody that was there at the big Hollywood show? You know, it was great. Uh, it's always fun to see everybody, and uh, all of us were there. We had a great turnout. It was really terrific. Mark, we had uh, a really great time. Mark was there, and Billy, and and June Lockhart, and uh, and even Kristen was there. Right, everybody was there. Right. Marta Kristen, yeah, we were all there, um, which isn't uh, something that happens that much. But being it's our 50th anniversary, uh, they're trying to pull together some occasions when we can all get together and, and see the fans and sign pictures. And we had a panel, and that was really entertaining. That must have been and something. I was kind of excited about the Blu-ray coming out. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, and I saw that. I saw that interview. Uh, of you guys that was on that L.A. news show. I got to see that, and uh, I was uh, that was really cool that the B9 was there, that the robots was there. Um, now, somebody privately owns the robot now? Um, yeah, there's somebody that has rebuilt the robot, and um, there's somebody in it, and he's very much like Bob May. No kidding. He passed away, but <laughs> I know. this guy has the spirit of Bob May in there. I'll oh, how do you like and that? very entertained by it. And we said, this guy's a great robot. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, Bob always used to put his heart and soul into yeah. every time he, he got in that uh, that suit and uh, long, long hours on the set. And oh, I can imagine. Totally engaged it. And, and the one, uh, that one, Billy told me that one story when him and Don had left, uh, had left him in the, in the suit after a long shoot, and they went in there, and he was reading the variety and smoking a cigar inside of the B nine. Horrible story! Oh, I think that's a terrible story, and you know, but it was funny. I mean, it it, it was kind of humorous. Actually. Yeah, that's really <laughs> it's really something, you know. Something. And I, I I know. Tell me, tell me about you and Doctor Smith. How how did you and Jonathan get along? Great. He he is was quite a storyteller. And uh, he was just a terrific guy. We we really adored him, and uh, he created quite a character for himself. I got such a kick out of Billy. Did a really good a really good impression of him. You know, it was very very interesting. Doesn't he? I know he sounds just like him. I know it's kind of kind must, of very must be channeling him or something. He <laughs> must. He must. He well. He hung around with him a lot. So uh, well, I will tell you what. Let let's talk about this great book. Let's get your partner on the line here. Tom, it's Tom McLaren, right? Is that who we're welcoming now? We can get both of them on the air, right? Okay. She's going to... Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Hey, this is an honor and a pleasure having the two of you on here. Uh, This really sounds like such an interesting book, especially with the foreword by Maureen O'Hara, I mean that that's like unbelievable. Uh, you know, uh, tell tell us about the what this book is all about. One, you know, you well, could, about? either one of you can take it. Well, the primary well, focus I, I of the book. Is is oh, go ahead, Tom. Do you want to take it? Go ahead, okay. Tom. Oh, I was just going to say the the primary focus of the book is continuity photos, and for people who may not be familiar with that term, 
Those are the photographs that were taken for hair, makeup, and wardrobe department usage. Mm -hmm. They're kind of candid, behind-the-scenes shots of the actors, uh, you know, kind of posing for the camera before they're stepping in front of the film camera. So it's kind of um, a peek behind the scenes. They're photographs that were never intended to be seen by the public, and that's why they're unusual, and if you're a movie lover like me, they're very cool, and they're just they're fun to look at. They're kind of mesmerizing. So. <laughs> So that's the primary theme, but the uh, the idea started with Angela. So, Angela, why don't you step in? Oh, I was just going to say, um, when I was researching for the Sound of Music Family Scrapbook, um, I was in the archives, and I found many wardrobe pictures, black and white, that were just so pristine and so beautiful, and they really took my breath away. I'm a photography lover anyway, mm -hmm. so it was really very, very... Um, it was like an aha moment, like, oh, my gosh. All and actors, as part of their job, is to take continuity photos. Right. You know, they're tasked to make sure that the wardrobe works or the colors work, and hair and wardrobe rely very heavily on them to correctly dress the actors for every scene. So um, that kind of started the adventure, and, and I was so happy to be able to take Tom along with me, knowing that he loves movies and uh, he loves... Um, this kind of memorabilia, and uh, yeah. it was great working with him, and we came across so many wonderful photos down there. It was really great. And, I mean, I'm, the, I'm, the photos, uh, that they, they must be, like, so pristine because, like, the studios were paying top dollar to these photographers to take these continuity pictures, right? I mean, of everybody. I mean, and there's some really, some really big titles here. Um, yeah, there are some amazing actors that uh, we got photos of. Um, there, you know, it, it was quite shocking. You know, Marlon Brando, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, um, Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. We would be looking through these boxes that hadn't been touched for like thirty or forty years, blowing oh, dust off the top of the boxes. I mean, you had to feel like Indiana oh, wow. Jones, you know, like you were cracking open the uh, the the Holy Grail with some of these shots, right? T Tom, yeah. uh, tell tell the folks about on the radio, like what is your background with this memorabilia and stuff and uh, and and everything? Oh, oh, sure. I mean, um, you know, I'm just basically like everyone who's probably listening. I'm a movie lover. I'm mm -hmm. a movie memorabilia collector. So I just have an appreciation for the golden era and the post-golden era. I love those actors. I love those films. And so this was kind of a dream project. Um, when Angela called me, it was back in 2011. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I felt so fortunate that, you know, A, I'm going to be working on a book with my friend. I mean, mm -hmm. how cool is that? And B, it's like, okay, I get to go to 20th Century Fox, and I get to go into the archive, and I get to be surrounded by millions of images. Because they, they, it's so vast and mm. just immense. It's it's amazing when you're down there. It's like being, um, I, like I say, like a kid in a candy store. I felt like in that movie, uh, what's that movie, Willy Wonka. I felt like I found the golden ticket. I'm down there in the archive, and I can basically pull any box I want. Mm -hmm. So I can look for pictures of this actor or this film, and it's just, it's there. And it's all in alphabetical order, right? I mean, total, like, alphabetical order, and it's the, from every film that they that 20th well, Century Fox did, correct? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're not perfectly computerized. Mm -hmm. um, you can basically request the film, and they will pull the boxes. Okay. Um, but, it, but it was not digitized. Okay. So, so bear in mind that Angela and I, we were wearing our little white gloves. Oh, and man. we were actually looking at negatives and transparencies. So... How long, how long did you research all of this before you narrowed it down? How many pictures are in the actual book total? Um, I so think we probably got days. two or 300 pictures. Uh -huh. And then how long did it take you to get down to that, that final decision with this, with all the, the great stuff that you had to pull from? Well, it was quite complicated. I mean, we started really with a wish list. Mm -hmm. of, you know, our favorite actors and our favorite films. Mm -hmm. And so we had to determine, you know, did John Wayne, for example, make films at 20th Century Fox? Mm -hmm. And then we found that he did, too. So No kidding. We, that we were, He did. He did do, too. 
So from that point, we have to make sure that we can actually use them, and so the clearances were handled between the publisher where, and the studio. Can I ask, were they Westerns or, or early Westerns, or what were they? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the title of the second one. I believe the one that we have in the book is North to Alaska. And okay. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. Blanking on the, I'm blanking on the title of the second one, though. Uh-huh. But um, that was kind of an interesting thing when we were doing this, because we wanted to get as many great, iconic movie stars in the book as possible. And virtually every iconic star did at least one film for 20th Century Fox. It's amazing. They may I have mean, been studio contract players at another studio. Yeah. But they were often loaned out, and they did do something for Fox. And that's wow. why we got so lucky. Who, like, let me ask you this, Tom. I mean, as, an, as you know, what are your top three favorite films What, it, what, it, what that you really like? I mean, what are, what are yours? Oh, I would say... Um, Come on, Tom. You'll get your turn. Just wait, Miss. Well, well, yeah, Angela knows that one of my favorite movie stars is Anne Margaret, and you'll see that Anne Margaret is very prominent in the book with five full pages. How can you not like Anne Margaret? (laughs) Uh, Exactly. I love Anne Margaret. So, but in terms of films, I I would say, you know, two of my all-time favorites made it into the book, and one is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Excellent. And, you know, how can you not love Newman Richard and Catherine Ross? And the other film, which is very special to me, is my wife's all-time favorite film, is Miracle on 34th Street. Nice. My wife was actually very instrumental in getting the Morning of Hero forward for the book, so we were very fortunate to have one of Hollywood's greatest leading ladies right I mean, forward to our book. McClintock was just on the other day and everything. It's just, uh, that's one of my favorites, and... Uh... And my other, my you know, my other favorite is Jane Eyre, the one with uh, the one with Orson Welles. I mean, do you got do you guys have any pictures of Orson in the book? No, no, no. I'm not sure he did something for Fox. Hmm. Yeah. That's, but that's did something. He, um, MGM. Not sure. Yeah, Angela, what uh, sure with, what 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 was your uh, real aha moment the first time you saw? It went, uh, when you were going through these uh, these different negatives and everything, what was the one that really hit you that that, that really knocked you on, on off your feet? Well, it was before book uh, was even becoming a, a reality. Red you know, we're you're breaking up a little bit, happened. Angie. Angie, well, could my, you get could you, like get near a window, or and we're losing you a little? Yeah. Okay. I'm coming over a canyon. I'm sorry. I oh, okay. Now we got you. Now we here. got you. Now we got, got you. Okay. Yeah, we got you now. Good. Okay. I'm at the bottom here at the, okay. the canyon now. <laughs> All right. Um, good. You know, we in L.A., we just keep moving. We're yeah, just keep moving. moving. I know. I know, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're always in your cars out there. I know. <laughs> I tried to sit at home for this, but it wasn't going to work today. <laughs> well, um, I'm just so... glad to talk to you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, um... I think it, it was The Sound of Music because, oh, yeah. it, you know, the pictures that I saw that really set me off mm-hmm. were the black and white pictures. Yeah. They were so beautiful because they were done with very large cameras. Mm. So the detail was so amazing. And, you know, I, I love black and white photography. Oh. It was always my forte it, to take black and white pictures and then hand paint them. Yeah. So um, I just, that's what took my breath away. Was And then they were actually like some of me in my costume. Sure, from sure. Sound of Music. It's like you're looking at it as if it's another person, though. You know, I, it, it's, it just brings back a memory. It's really something. And it's, and it's, these photos are, are mainly, there's some with makeup, and it goes through the whole process of the continuity, right? It, a lot of them, like the ones of Marilyn that shows her without makeup, and then, then you see the, the finished product. Is that how this works? Well, as Tom said, they weren't meant to be seen by the public. Mm-hmm. So you do see some of the actors with different hairdos, you know, um, with different eye makeup on. Maybe they're looking down because they're showing that the eyeshadow, the amount of eyeshadow they're wearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the stars uh, for the hair uh, pictures are holding a comb or a brush in front of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorites is of Julie Andrews from Star. She's wearing a beautiful fur white uh, coat and she's holding a hairbrush like it's a microphone. Uh, she looks absolutely gorgeous but she's holding this brush mm-hmm. but that was because the hair department was supposed to get that picture, <laughs> and that's the way that they identified them. 
That's that amazing. Those holding combs or hairbrushes actually went to the hair department. So are, are you going to be doing, like, book signings? And uh, have you been doing the signings and everything, the two of you, or what? Yeah. We've done um, well, Tom and I have done, done quite a few of those. Okay. Are you, are you got to come east. You got We got to get you up here in New York at one of the bookshops, and then we can all hang out together and have lunch. You know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds great. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a good chance to keep keep an eye on my website. Um, I'll be announcing some Lost in Space reunions. Um, we're possibly going to be coming back east. Ooh, well, that would be really nice because I, I, I like to – I've been trying to go to that chiller one. I know you made one of those one of those years, didn't you? The one that's in Parsippany? Yeah. 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 So um, what what are your websites? Let, let's make sure we got this, and we want to. And the book is seventy five dollars, correct? Well, you can also go to Amazon, or you can go to my website, and I sign them. Um, okay. And that book signing, of course, Tom signs them also. Um, so my website is Angela Dash mm-hmm. Cartwright okay. and dot uh, com. I also have an art website, but you can get to all my different sites. From my that particular site, mm-hmm. and Tom also has a site because he's a working actor. Oh well, that's good to hear. What are you working on, Tom? What What's your latest that. project, Tom? Well, I'm I'm fortunate. I'm I'm currently in the movie Expelled, wow. which is available digitally, and it actually hits Netflix starting tomorrow, February first. And what it is, it's a uh, teenage oriented comedy, and we okay. had great success with that, and. In the fall, uh, coincidentally, I'm going to do a film for, or I've done a film for 20th Century Fox called The Exorcism of Molly Hartley. Well, that's I've got really that good. Coming in September or October. So, yeah, I've got, I've got a few things in the works, a few things in the can. And my website is uh, tom com. All righty then. So, well, we wish you, too, a lot of success with the book. It sounds wonderful. I really like it. Uh, anything coming up with the. Uh, the Sound and Music Gang uh, this year, uh, Angie, or uh, I know you're always getting yeah. together with them. <laughs> yeah, um, only one thing. Look for it in March. Can't tell you what it is. I okay. Can, well, we'll be waiting for it. We'll be waiting for it. Absolutely. Just uh, keep your eyes open and, and check the websites, really, and Facebook. That's where we are. Well, so, we like to hear um, that, and you can, this is, you always have an open door here. Anytime you want to come on and uh Talk about anything that you're working on, dear. It's an open door here on the Jim Crane Show. It goes for you, too, Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Great talking to you again. Hey, I, I, it's the best. And I was going to say, one of my favorite parts in, in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid is when they're up on the cliff and they're looking down yeah. about to jump in the water. And he goes, uh, oh. I can't oh. swim. And he goes, <laughs> no. Ah, oh, the fall, it kill you anyway, so what's the big deal? <laughs> it's a classic moment. I, know, I love it's... that moment. Oh, and the knife fight. Somebody say, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> yeah. That's it's the other one. Movie. It's such so cool. All right. Well, you two, you two have a nice night there out. We are we both out in L.A. today? Yeah. Oh, how it's wonderful. We're, we're both in our car driving home. So we're all stuck in traffic. Oh, well, you, that's what that, yeah, but at least gas is cheaper now. <laughs> Are you going to, oh, do you have a Super Bowl prediction for us? Uh, who who do you like, Angela, tomorrow? Who, who are you going to root for? Um, I'm going to root for probably the Seahawks. Are you going to go with the Seahawks? Yeah, you're close to it out there. How about you, Tom? Well, I'm a movie lover, not a sports lover. So. Okay. On Super Bowl Sunday, I go out to eat because the restaurants are empty. There you go. <laughs> and I'm picking Katy Perry to win two to one. Anyway, that's the way it's going to be. All well, right. Angela Cartwright, thank you so much for calling in. We'll keep watching you on MeTV and looking for you on your website and everything. And, Tom, good luck in that great movie going on Netflix tomorrow. And thanks for calling in the Jim Crane Show. Great pleasure to have both of you. And get this book, Thank folks. You. This makes a great Valentine's gift. I'll tell you what. Finding <laughs> the Stars, Lost Treasures from the 20th Century Fox Archive. Oh, you're so good, Angie. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. God bless. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye.